All right, everyone, with the ousting of Liz Cheney, the neocons, I think, are seeing the writing on the wall, which is that the vast supermajority of Republican partisans, as well as a lot of people that support Trumpism tacitly, but aren't Republicans, myself included as an independent voter, of course, not registered with any party, um, they realize that the Dick Cheney, George W., Mitt Romney, John Boehner sort of thing is beginning to end. Um, the paradigm does not favor them, and what's happened is that the Democrats are absorbing all the warmongers and billionaires, and the Republicans are actually attempting to be uh, the government of the people again, uh, like for the working and middle class. See, what populism is essentially about is the idea, it's a radical notion, I know, it's basically the same as Hitler, I keep getting told, now, is the idea that the government exists predominantly to represent the people that pay the government. So that means the vast corpus, the bulk of the U.S. population a disproportionate amount of which is working middle and upper middle class. It's the bulk of your population. Um, that's who the government is paid to represent. These are the people that fund the government. The billionaires don't pay anything. The poor can't pay anything. Who's actually paying for the entire system to exist? There, there's your 80% your populist sort of block. The Democrats are terrified of this because they realize that if the GOP is successful, they'll have to drop half of their identity politicking shticks uh, because it'll, they'll no longer work. If a person starts to identify more as, hey, I'm a middle-class American, as opposed to, hey, I happen to be a Hispanic American, they're not going to vote for the Democrats, because they're going to vote their economic self-interest. Populism works. We saw this under Trump. Mass deregulation, tax code reform, real reform, as opposed to the nonsense being peddled by the Democrats and the rhinocons right now. And so what you've got is a situation where some people in the GOP, they've been left behind like relics. They're fossilized. They're dinosaurs. And so now they're threatening to form a third party. About, about 100 Republicans, link in the description, archived, of course, always use archive.today. They're threatening to leave the GOP high and dry. We're going to form our own party with blackjack and hookers. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, what's, what's the list of names? Okay, a bunch of neocons. So, corporate grifters, who you should just become a Democrat at that point. The pro-war lobby. Deep, de entrenched deep staters like lame establishment of the 90s and so yeah, well, what a roster that is. <laughs> that's, a, it's, that's really, really going to do well. It's going to be like, the, it's going to go over like the XFL or like green ketchup. <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, the problem is that you don't have enough people. You don't have any popular support. J Donald Trump, to be clear, again, just, just so we're aware, we, we must not forget this when we analyze such things, of all Republicans in the entire last century has the highest in-party approval. He's not even in office. His in-party approval is still higher than Ronald Reagan's. That leaves very, very few people that are going to be willing to switch, in some cases, long-term partisan loyalty up for another party, which is offering them basically, hey, we're, we're the Republicans of 30 years ago minus Trump. Basically, we want to go back to the 1990s. We're not sure of what century or millennium it is. Th these are a bunch of dinosaurs. All the younger, like, upstart Republicans are at least vaguely Trumpist. Some of them, by the way, deviate deeply from what I believe in, like a Crenshaw. Crenshaw is, is also ostensibly, in some cases, a, a war hawk. But he doesn't play the I'm going to apologize whenever Democrats call me names game, which is good. He believes in apparently actual economic reform, which is good, so I can maybe forgive elements of his foreign policy failings. But with the old guard Republicans, there's no, there's no positive to them. They don't stand for decreasing gun control. They want to keep it the same. So, Second Amendment, fuck that, I guess. They don't stand in the way of surveillance, at least the pre-existing surveillance. They're, they're only uncomfortable with adding new layers of problems, uh, and this is basically how the Republicans have been since Ronald Reagan left office, uh, or, or left his mind behind around 1985 or 6 or so. Uh, and when the corporations came and started operating as his brain became a little bit of an issue. This is why he is not, in my estimation, a great president, just the last tolerable one before Trump. They don't stand for actual free speech. They, they like censorship just as much as the Dems. They don't stand for actual tax reform. They, they stand for a marginal reduction in business taxes, and then they leave it at that, and then they go on vacation. Trump gave us real reform. Do you realize how much tax relief was aimed at the middle class, especially entrepreneurs? It was great for me. I hope that Biden fails in ripping apart the current tax code. I hope that if I hope that Manchin stands in his way and that he fails to use budget reconciliation. Do you look at the inflation rate right now. It's more than double what it should be for April. The economy is beginning to collapse already. Beijing Biden's only been in office for a few months. 
Just imagine the problem if he continues. Just imagine the problems we're going to have. Look, you know, record border crossings, a 20-year high as of April. Inflation twice what it should be. You've got oil shocks. Essentially, it's basically like living in 1978 or so. Well, that's a shitty time in U.S. history. At least in the early 70s, you still have some hippie shit. That's kind of cool. And then in the 80s, you have, like, you know, Gary Newman and shit like that. So that's cool. You get, you know, the possibility of a nuclear war. I'd rather have that lording over my head than deal with this bullshit. And then the GOP has it as a mini schism. But I love, this is the other thing. This is part of my own analysis, my, my own gripe with some of the, the shills out there. If you look at, like, the Lincoln Project and some of these groups and say, well, look at this, the Republican Party is falling apart, because you've got a handful of people that, are, that even have any notoriety at all signing this letter. A handful of these people, you might have heard their names. Most of them, it's like, okay, the, the night janitor of, of the West Wing uh, has threatened to leave the GOP behind. Uh, a chef that works for Nancy Pelosi but was registered Republican is having second thoughts. Nobody gives a fucking goddamn shit. But if you look at virtually any meaningful issue among the Democrats, it's a huge glaring schism. You've got the Gang of Four, well, now technically the Gang of Five, you have Tlaib and, and Omar and some of these other morons. They're all, right now, what are they doing? Biden just said, well, Israel has the right to defend itself. No, says AOC, they don't actually have that right because this is all prefaced on pushing Palestinians out of East Jerusalem. You never would have found the Democrats saying that 10 years ago. But now you got like at least a dozen members of Congress that are, that are part of that. That are, that are going to get called Nazis by the ACLU and the ADL and shit. Uh, but, but there's a schism there, an actual one. It's not low-level individuals you've never heard of. This, these are major members of Congress and certain governors. Senators, congressmen and women, governors, and, and so forth, deviating explicitly from Biden's own suggestions. You don't have that in the GOP. You have Liz Cheney. That's it. Liz Cheney and a handful of down-balloters and staff, and then sometimes Mitt Romney. That's the schism in the GOP. A couple members of Congress and some staff. In the Democratic Party, it is a large block of leftists within Congress. Sanders, AOC, Elon Omar, and, and, and all of the attendant secondary people with them. Far more people, far more name recognition. There's your schism, and that's on one goddamn fucking issue. Look at the economic issue. He's starting to Biden is getting dogpiled by state-level Democrats from New Mexico, Arizona, and parts of California and Texas right now. He's getting attacked by the Democrats. You don't see this. Who's attacking Trump? MSM miscreants, who are literally paid to do that, and they're not Republicans anyway. They don't give a shit. And again, Cheney and Romney. And, and, jo and George W., who apparently is now approved of. He's got above 50% approval uh, because hindsight apparently isn't 2020. People, oh yeah, he killed half a million people, but he never made a mean tweet, so he's better than Donald Trump. Goddamn insane. Why don't you just become a Democrat? You're obviously a partisan, and, and, and the GOP has left you behind. Uh, just join. The, you don't need to form a third party. Oh, but wait. See, here's the problem. If they don't form a third party and just become Democrats, they don't get elected, they don't get book deals, and they don't get money. That's why they're doing this. It's a shtick. It's a grift. They know that they're going to be forced aside by the new zeitgeist within the GOP, so they're saying, well, we'll make lemonade out of lemons. We can still make lots of money. Yeah, I don't have my position anymore, but I'm actually making 20, twice as much money. The Tale of How I Opposed Donald Trump by uh, IP Standing. That's <laughs> what you're going to get. And it's going to fail politically. It'll be like the Lincoln Project. They'll make a lot of money, and they'll have absolutely no real impact on politics. And just keep embarrassing themselves over and fucking over. That's about all. Peace out.